In this video, we'll cover how you can automate processes in QGIS using the Python console. And don't worry, you don't need any previous experience in Python scripting. Now, why would you want to do this? If you're like me, you might have flown a time series experiment where you're going over the same field and plots over and over, and you're extracting out similar data for each time point. And that might take a lot of steps where you're clicking through the graphical user interface, specifying what you want done, what, you, what equations you want to calculate, what data you want out of it. And if we, can, if we can go through all of that in an automated way, where we can just give it a code chunk, tell it which, uh, which files we want to work with and where they are, then we can move through the whole process a lot faster, and in some cases also more cleanly, because maybe you won't have to worry about um, clicking on, for example, the wrong file in the, the raster calculator or, or elsewhere. So automating processes has a lot of value and can save you a lot of time. In this video, we'll talk about three main things. First, we'll cover an example script that you can use, and all you'll have to do is specify the names of your files and the folder, and then it'll go through many of the processing steps that we've talked about on this channel and result in CSV files with data in them. Second, we'll talk about troubleshooting and what you can do if it doesn't work out the first time you try to run it. Lastly, we'll talk about how you can customize this kind of thing so that you can generate all kinds of other data on things that you're interested in for your projects. So let's jump into it. So here we have some scripts that I'll make available and I'll include the, the URL to this. Um, and all you will have to do to run this yourself on your own data is just, again, update this folder name and the names of a NDVI file, a digital surface model file, and a plot grid. Now, I'm looking at this in Microsoft Word because maybe it's familiar to you and it's easy for me to highlight and show those files that will need to be changed, but I want to mention that this is not a Python editor. This isn't uh, meant for this at all, and so it, it could have some issues. You might be wondering, well, where do we run this? So let's just copy this whole thing out, and I'm going to take it over to QGIS, and I'll show you where we run this, and that is um, in the Python console. So you can click Plugins in Python console, and then you can click here and open the, the editor. And we can select, in this case, select all control A, and then we'll just drop this in here. And this is definitely a better uh, editor for Python code. And if you throw in a strange symbol, for example, it'll detect it for you. And, and again, all you'd need to do to run this is just specify your folder where your files will be. And then within that folder, you'll have, uh, you'll, you'll just give it a name of your NDVI file, digital surface model, and plot package. And then when we're happy with this, we can save it. And we can also just click the, the green arrow here to run it. And it will get started here doing calculations and extracting out the data that we want. This will probably take about a minute. You can see that it's already getting started on the process. It's already loading some layers here. Um, it's, it's actively thinking about it. Um, while this is running, I'm going to maybe just jump back into our code and we'll go through that in a little bit more detail to this and it's, you can see there it's actually it's already done so it didn't take too long but um, we'll go through quickly what the what this code is doing uh, so that you ha maybe have a better understanding of what you might uh, do if you want to edit this kind of thing in the future um, so again here we're specifying the name of an ndvi file and and we're we're creating a variable that we're calling NDVI file. And this way we can just give it the name of our file one time and it will use this throughout the rest of the later code so we don't have to go through and give it that name over and over every time we're, we want to work with that file. So it can make it easier. Uh, and then the same is true with the DSM files and the, uh, and the plot file here. In this next series of steps, it's going to create a series of uh, Ver like future variables and that it'll be creating new files uh, in those places and so I probably wouldn't really touch that too much and then this is where the, the real processing is beginning and here this is using that raster calculator we've talked about this in other videos and it's using that NDVI file and just doing a simple expression where it's just saying is it is the NDVI 
greater or less than 0 0.5. And then we're going to use this to make a classification layer. It's classifying as a plant or non-plant in this step. And you you could change this value. Sometimes I've used 0.4. I know uh, you know people that use other values. It just depends on what's good for your data. But you could change this if you want. And then also it might be worth keeping in mind. This is saying layer one of that file, and that's where my data is. That's probably the default on yours. If you're not sure where like which band your data is in, it's probably in one. Um, but you can imagine like a, like a true color image, one file has red, green, and blue. So there's multiple bands. Um, and I know some folks that have, uh, have their NDVI data in band six, for example, and they would know this. So that's where they would update that. And then this is gonna go through and uh, use these like this as the input. And um, based on an expression that we just gave it, it's going to run that and then put the output as this like thresholded classification layer file. And then it's gonna uh, it's gonna crank out uh, the the output into our QGIS project. So it's gonna so I'm not gonna go through all of these. It's a similar process here. We're gonna be generating a masked NDVI layer where we're just looking at the NDVI of plants and soils just become soil pixels become NA. We're gonna look at uh, the digital surface model of canopies alone. Look at the digital surface model of soil alone, and uh, then then we're going to extract out the statistics for each of those and load them into our QGIS project and then pull the data out of the attribute tables and into CSV files in that same folder that we originally were working on. So again, you'll run all, through all those steps. All you have to do is change the names of the files and, and point it at the folder where they are. Um, so again, here are the outputs. I do definitely recommend looking at these and um, and just checking like you know automating this with some script is definitely not a reason to uh to to be sloppy you do not yeah you, you want to make sure you're checking what you're doing and so we can go through here this is our that first first output the threshold uh file this is just a classification layer classifying things as uh plant or soil so uh white in this case was plant black was soil uh, this is the masked NDVI, and you can see that there's there's no data for the soil pixels, and then there is data for the the plant pixels. And so if we if we it, uh, download data from this, which we did, then we're only going to look at those plant pixels. We're not looking at the soil pixels. And then uh, and and to me, it's looking like it's doing a, a good job separating plants uh, from from soil. So that's that's looking good to me. Um, that looks like just perfect. Is even picking up some of the dead plants and whatnot. I, there's like some maybe this dead weed or something. Um, and I think it's it's doing it's handling that quite well. I would say. And um, then yeah, we have our canopy digital surface model soil only there for that uh, soil digital surface model. And then these these output layers. Uh, and if we opened up the attribute tables on these, let's see, open attribute table, then we would see that now, because of our script, it had, that, that there's data uh, in those attribute tables, so that's awesome. And then we can go to this folder and click on the same thing, and we'll see that it's already written these CSV files. And I, I didn't have this combine the CSV files into one, uh, because I'm like, I know for my, my fields often will have like different sections where I'm doing different experiments and I didn't want to combine everything by ID number or something because I'll have like different grids. And I don't want to ever mess around with, with issues on that. It's easy enough for me to just copy and paste these columns. You'll see the data is now already in Microsoft Excel in a CSV file. So um, again, just by changing the file names you can uh, get uh, get this kind of thing uh, in a CSV format and go through all those steps but uh, what happens if you hit run on this and it doesn't work out the first time what if you get an error message what I have a few thoughts on this um, first it could be helpful to just go through and uh, like work on your Python script one chunk at a time and see where that issue is. 
And so you can always just take part of it and I'll copy that, I'll control A, control V, and you can just run that chunk and you can see, does that have a, a, an error? And then you can add the next chunk, the next chunk and see like, where does this error arise? Um, so that's one key thing that I would really recommend. Um, and then uh, just be, I, I mentioned this earlier, but just be really careful about all those symbols. Um, if, if you were working on it in, in Word, uh, which I, again, I don't recommend, then you, you might have issues with your symbols. So I'm gonna just zoom in on this. And um, like if I try to put in a single quote here, notice that that's a different symbol. So that will throw an error message. So be careful about it. Um, just be like, don't, I wouldn't change anything unless you're pretty confident in what you're doing. And when you, when you do make changes, it might be best to do that uh, right there in the Python editor and run it. Uh, and if it works, then you, can, you save that, uh, that Python code. There could be other little things. Um, recently, I was working with somebody down the hall who was using a Mac. He had a colon in his name, uh, like the name of his files, and, and it was throwing an error message on that. Uh, realistically, where we're at in the world, I would say just if you're having error messages, you can't figure it out uh, immediately, you can take it to your favorite AI helper and see if it can figure it out. It might notice weird symbol issues and things like that. Um, so then when it when you go to rerun, I would also just recommend making sure that you've closed out of any of these files. Um, so like you don't want to have uh, things like that, the, the CSV files open, and then make sure that you've also, uh, I would just recommend uh, eliminating these. So I just hit, click the top one, click, click the bottom one, and then uh, right click and uh, remove layer. So I just get rid of them out of there if, if I'm gonna rerun this. Um, and you can sweep this clean as well if you want it to look a little bit cleaner. Um, so now we've talked about some troubleshooting steps and what you can do there. Lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, how you can customize this and, and how you can do other things and, and a little bit on how I generated the code that we're looking at here. And um, so I would go into view panels and then make sure that processing toolbox is checked. And then from the processing toolbox, you can enter in names of functions that you'd want to use. Like here I have raster, uh, raster up, I could use raster calculator. And notice real quick that this is a different interface then if you click on it from the, the top of the toolbar up here, raster, raster calculator. That, this is a different, uh, you know, a different interface here than over here. So do it from the processing toolbox. And then we'll specify what our inputs are gonna be. We can say like, let's say, for example, that we want some uh, NDVI data and our expression will be NDVI is greater than 0 0.5. We did this earlier, we can say okay. And then we can say, like, let's say this thing to uh, you know, threshold 0 0.5, or yeah, just threshold, whatever. So we save, and then here, when we're happy with whatever this process is gonna be, then this is the important part, we can copy this as a Python command. And now we have that code, I'm just gonna accept that, because I don't, don't really need to run this right now. Um, but, um, I could run it from here anyway. But now we have this this code and uh, it's all in one line. It's a little bit hard to kind of see what's going on. Um, here we go. And we can just separate this out and now it'll be a little bit easier to look at. There we go. So now we have this looking a little bit cleaner and you'll see that it still has those, uh, by default, it has those full file names. Those are the things that earlier we, we took and we can just name that as NDVI file one time and then every time later in the code that, it, that we would need to you know, rename it, we, we can just skip that step. It's, it's been named as a variable. We could substitute that then later uh, as 
as NDVI. So we could go back and take a quick look at where that was done right here. Uh, so you can see there like NDVI file uh, and then that, that file is just the, the folder path and then the name of the file. So you can name it one time and then substitute that out. But again, just being able to use the, uh, the processing toolbox tools and then copy those out as Python scripts, then you can plug them in here and substitute names as you see fit uh, and, and make a, a pipeline for your data that's automated that is much faster and more convenient to use. So I hope that these methods are useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.